that you should record for the cloud. Record really? It. Yeah. Okay. I have a pro account, um, but you can record with any of them. I actually have it as a, as a default for recording, except I have to turn it off for my scouts because the scouts, you can't record. So, I see. Can you um, just, can I keep a copy also? Yeah. I, as soon as it's over, it sends it to me and I can share it with you. Okay. Then I don't have to worry about that. I see this is like beautiful flower. I think this was something I was editing for my photography workshop. Yeah, I looks had amazing. taken this picture um, a couple years back, but I, was, I edited it on my one one. I wanted to show how you can make it kind of look a little dreamy and see the bee in there and all that kind of stuff. I know, things. I just learned that, that you could put a background. Dude, really? Yeah, I just, I don't use Zoom like that. You should have told me last time. <laughs> oh my God, you are like so behind. Teach me. We need, I'm we need, sorry. We no, need, I didn't know right away. You know, I did actually so I was trying to like, you know, put up one of my screens and like hide my room because I do a lot of it from my room. Like I have a computer right next to my bed from whenever I'm crafting. Like I have a whole crafting That's station smart, here. Because you know, I always need to, I always need to find, it took me a long time to clear out everything in the background because sometimes it's just <laughs> distracting. And now I just found out today, an hour ago, that you could do this. Yes, as you know, the biggest thing is you want to be as different from the background color as it is, mm -hmm. right? And then also, like, if you move fast, you kind of like see it get dragged yeah. a little bit. But it's I mean, still obviously, better. the best thing is a green screen behind you. You know, and that's even an option. Like, you, if you click green screen, it knows that it's a green screen, and then it does even better job when you put a uh, bat when you put a, a virtual background on. Exactly. So that's what we have to do. But I don't have get a background here. I do have a green screen, but my green screen is really wrinkled. <laughs> but it works, right? It does. I just got a new white. I just got a new white backdrop, which is a really nice and heavy one. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, like, cause this is my. I'm back in my office again now. Oh wow! You have a lot of stuff. So, um, my son, older son, got kicked upstairs. Wait, is this is this a is this a real is this a real background or? This is my real office. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, I can't know, tell um, anymore because it's, um... my older son had to be was always in here in my office, right? Because I gave it to him for homeschooling. But then once Ethan had to be homeschooled, right. and he is ADHD and he is like ten and has to have me on him every second of the way to get anything done. Yeah. Um, we moved in here. Martin moved upstairs, and now so I share my office with my son to get his schoolwork done and my work done, and it's, you know, it's almost. Wait, over. can we can we take a picture for the thumbnail? Yeah. For YouTube? Hold on, we're gonna take them together. Hold on. I'm gonna move my light on a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna do a screen. I'm gonna do a screenshot. So, you ready? Yeah. You wanna pose or you wanna smile? I don't know how to pose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just smile. Well, I take people's pictures. <laughs> okay, that's true. Same here. All right, I got it. Hold on, let me see it. You know, it's so funny because I'm not comfortable behind the camera yet. And I'm trying to like do the videos more because I know that's how I have to do to increase, you know. You're doing, you're doing, you're Instagram doing very well. I saw you posting on Instagram. This is uncomfortable um, for me. I know, yeah. but you have to get used to it. But we we talked about this. It takes time. So. It takes time, and you know, I guess um, knowing my body, right? And I still see myself in one image versus like what other people see it as. Mm. So it's still very. I'm very self conscious, you know. So it's very hard for me to see it, you know, unless I have all my makeup done and all my hair done and everything else. It's very hard for me to see. Oh God, I like I, I like everything. I like everything organic because that's who you really are. <laughs> I know, and I, and I promise people to be more real and be more open, you know, and, and have more realistic pictures, right? Because, you know, on um, on Instagram, right? Like, obviously, probably one of my goals in life is to inspire people with disabilities. If I'm always put together looking like, you know, quote unquote normal, then how is that? reflecting 100%. so I do do you highlight your hair is red now I think yes I so I do colors I normally do color oh. it red and because I have natural red and, and blonde highlights I was actually blonde as a baby yeah. and actually yeah. as a toddler too um but I red I usually go with red and yeah. so my hair salon actually did a really cool thing is they gave us well they didn't get I mean purchased it but they put in packages that your hair coloring and you could pick it up or they delivered it for me in my case and then you could do your hair coloring at home of course, right. the thing is, is that I didn't expect it to take as long as it did, and I had a scout town hall meeting. I'm always on everybody else's cases to put their cameras on. Yeah. That night, my camera did not go on. I was not going on to a scout town hall meeting with my hair in a little baggie. <laughs> I'm coloring it. Nobody's <laughs> like, gonna judge you. 
I'm like, well, you know, 50 guys probably looking at me going, what the heck is that lady doing? But um, other than that, no. So it's, you know, the Zoom has been, ex it's been an experience. Um, I think I kind of had to dive in because when that webinar that I showed you that I helped with, mm -hmm. I was in charge of doing the technical stuff and getting it all working and right. everybody sure, on it. Very good. Facebook and getting the closed captions on it and also answering questions at the same time. <laughs> so right. it was, um, and I didn't have, and at that time it wasn't wireless. So that, after that, I wired my room for Ethernet because I'm like, you know what? I'm like, honey, I'm not waiting for you to do Ethernet. You give me the tools now. I'll do it. I'm like, just give it to me. I'm like, I'm not waiting anymore because it kept on dropping. And I don't know if the pocket that, or, that or, of speed they were dropping on um, on Zoom was Zoom's mm -hmm. end or my end, right? Mm -hmm. But there were falls and then we're, we got kicked off of, of Facebook several times. Yeah. Mind you, it was a 75 minute, you know, yeah. thing, but still. So, but I've been learning and it's been actually the silver lining of everything. And thanks been, for sharing, like whatever you're learning. Thanks for sharing with all of us. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, I've been taking classes. I mean, I've been taking, I've been taking editing classes too, because ON1, Raw has been doing a lot of classes. Mm -hmm. So I do, I use ON1 Raw a lot now. I use like Photoshop when I want to do my scrapbooking pages and mm -hmm. like have the depth and like clipping to masks and all the pretty stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, for the quick editing and then the whole flow, I do ON1 Raw. Mm -hmm. That and they give it to me free, which is really nice. Yes. Um, but they have a teacher discount. They have an educator discount. They have a kid discount. So. It's easy to pick up and it's easy to teach because when I teach it to my Cub Scouts, my Cub Scouts, my Boy Scouts, you know, I could share my screen and show them, hey, you got a photo on your phone. We can still take the lighting up. We can still change the balance really quick. We can still do this, you know, and they got a lot of preset that you can use really quickly out of the box. So it makes it, you know, really easy for kids to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, adults too, but kids as well. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously it's for everybody, but they've been very competitive in their comp in what they do compared to um, Photoshop and Adobe and mm -hmm. a lot easier to actually do it you know so a lot less work of maneuver and a lot less of trying to figure out like all because a lot of the they do a lot of behind the scenes and then they present you with a UI system that's much easier to use mm -hmm. than I think Photoshop or at least Photoshop and, and Adobe right not Photoshop elements is easy you know that's like easy pie but you know the other stuff can get a little bit more UI face can be really intimidating to people. Right. But you know, I've so then there's a difference in Zoom between Zoom meetings and webinars. Yeah. So Why is that? Uh, well webinars wait, wait, wait. Really can we wait, wait can we get into it once I do an intro? Because I gotta do an intro. <laughs> we go oh, yeah. We gotta do an intro. <laughs> All right. I know there's a formal one. I'm gonna put lipstick on and everything. Oh stop. We're we gonna put this online. You didn't know that? We're gonna put this online. This is part it's two. Okay. It's, it's all good. <laughs> You're so it's funny. It's actually good because you know what? We're going to do a plug then. I'm trying to sell my stuff, man. And this is like uh, Ellen's oh, Dale. Let's, let's talk events. about that too. Let's talk about too. This is a lot, you know, this is the ending of Ellen's Awareness Month and I'm trying to raise some funds for EDS. Yes. So, hey guys, this is Ming from Ming Fight Chan and guess who's back? Deborah's back. So, if you haven't checked us out, um, check out her previous interview that you know we did last time in January and now we're here in May <laughs> following <laughs> up and hey and then and then now because of coronavirus we're home quarantining and we just want to follow up I have been quarantined since January since February 29th I've been quarantined since some March like 11th <laughs> well when I was in DC for rare disease week and yeah. I heard everything that was happening yeah. So yes, I was in DC the last week of February, um, and I had one of my hospital visits there too. So that was less than fun. Um, and then I came home to find out what was happening. So I'm getting all these messages from the school districts and everything. And yeah. I right away pulled my son out of school because of my risk. obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually didn't agree with that at first. They were kind of like, "Oh, it's too soon. You don't need to." And I'm like, oh, "No, but I do because if he gets it, I'm hospitalized." You know? Yeah. So that was a little bit of a battle. Mm -hmm. They didn't like me taking him out. They didn't think it was necessary. They thought it was premature. It was about literally two weeks before they before the California schools closed mm -hmm. because. Um, when was I that? Was do you remember? Do you remember when was that? What? Do you remember? Do you remember, do you remember when was that? When was what was? They, so it was two was? weeks after the first of uh, March. So yeah. For the 14th. Yeah. Yeah. So, so around that time. Mm -hmm. I know that is that I was told I can homeschool for two weeks. And then after that, I would have to either put him back into school 
mm -hmm. or I'd have to withdraw him from school and there may not be a spot for him next year, mm -hmm. which I was like really upset about because I've been volunteering at the school for seven, eight years, right? So right. I was kind of like, why wouldn't my kid have a spot at like, my own school? So I was a little annoyed about that. And I was going to bring it up to the school district, but right at the time that our two weeks came up, the schools were closed, ended up being closed. Cause I'm in the mm -hmm. Bay area. Mm -hmm. So we fall, you know, we're in Santa Clara County. We're just south of the Bay Area. We fall under the same category of anything in the Bay Area does for closures. Mm -hmm. So we closed when all the Bay Area closed down. Mm -hmm. But, you know, because of my illness, is that we uh, put everybody in seclusion a little bit earlier. So okay. it's, it's uh, today is actually probably one of the first days I've been out, besides getting a pain pump filled um, mm -hmm. and an MRI. <laughs> and all the times I've been out of my house. We, our community did a really cool thing of adopting kids we don't know that are graduating from high school and giving them little gifts and little treats and things. And so my thing was I made him, uh, um, he's, a, he's an outdoor person and fishing. So I made him, uh, I took a big, one of those big grimaces and I put, you know, um, eat fish, sleep and feet. And then mm -hmm. I made him a shirt that said, bite me, but it, it was a fishing lure and her hooks too. I checked yeah. the mom to make sure that that was okay. I'm like, you know, I find it funny, but I'm a New Yorker. So, you know, we, yeah. our, our, our sense of humor is a little different. It's a little different. <laughs> They were good with that. And then the other thing was um, I make him a keychain and then we took pictures. Yeah. So uh, I got to take some of his pictures today and that was really cool. Oh, can you share or is that you want to edit them first? I have to edit them first. I mean, they're not okay. bad. They can't, even some of the ones without editing weren't bad at all. But can you, can you share some when you finish, when you edit, so we could share, we could put it on the screen? Yeah. So you can see. I mean, because, you know, um, I don't have it on my, it's on my computer upstairs. But mm -hmm. I will say that it was really cool you know, that whole getting that connection with the teenage boy is kind of hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially teenage boys doesn't really necessarily want his picture taken. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been at work all day. So the first, you can tell, you, it's so interesting when you look at the pictures, right? Because you can tell the difference from the beginning to when he got comfortable. And he was actually doing a real smile. A lot and of, a lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the people that I shoot for, they like the same thing in the beginning. They're very uncomfortable. They're very stiff. And as, 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 as time go on, they're more comfortable with you. And they start smiling and they start opening up and the pictures came out better. Well, that's yeah. why I say a lot of people complain about school photos. And I go, well, it's because they don't have time to spend with you, right? Because yeah. like they, they, they march you in and they march you out. Well, his first two pictures, he barely smiled, you know, and he was stiff and he was closed. And, you know, after he got really comfortable, he had a great It looks like mug shots. <laughs> you know, and it was like, his great smile. And, you know, dad was joking around about being GQ and it was kind of was, you know, in a way because he got really comfortable with his car. He has a car that he's been built, rebuilding, and he got really comfortable with it. And so they'll be get that. Got a great shot with him and his mom. So, you know, I also realized I don't have very long to get the shoes with the, with the kid, right? right? He definitely avoid, he doesn't want his picture taken. Mm -hmm. I mean, I explained, just like I did last year, the young lady whose pictures I took that it's not for as, as much as it is now for mom mm -hmm. and dad. Mm -hmm. Down the line, it's really for you. Yeah. You know, so enjoy it, make it fun because you want to remember this. You know, and they don't get any, they're not getting a high school graduation. They're not getting to get walked. Not getting I know walk. this year yeah. because of the whole, who but knew? As no. much as my high school people were not nice to me, I still would, you know, I still went to my prom, even though the people will not know he's nice to me. I mean, I got kicked out of my own limo a week before the prom. Um, That's not horrible. everybody was nice. Yeah, it, cool. I did not. I've had a couple of good friends in high school and some have since apologized to me for their treatment of me when I was in high school. So I'm like- They don't know any better at that time. They're too young, you know? Right, I feel well that's like why I try to do education awareness, right? Because kids don't know, even the ignoring itself, how hurtful that is, right? But I mean, you know, the people who called, who call me a faker or kicking the crutches out from underneath me, mm -hmm. yeah, those guys, I still, you know, but those are the kind of guys you want to educate, right? I mean, like when I do disability awareness with the Boy Scouts, I very clearly talk about invisible disabilities because mm -hmm you know, I looked normal. And if I'm yeah. not wearing my braces, I look normal. You know, yeah. and if I'm standing without my braces and without my wheelchair, I feel completely normal. Should I yeah. be? No. You know, I mean, my nurse was yelling at me today because I'm standing too much. Um, but do I look normal? Yes. And it's one of the hardest things with Ehlers Downloads and with any of these disorders is that you look normal, even though on the inside, your body is anything but normal. You know, kind of joke when says, what's wrong? You know, asking you to list what's wrong. And the kind of the family joke is like, um, the list of what's not long, wrong will be a whole lot shorter than what is wrong. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's one of the hardest things. And of course, people always think you fake it and then they don't believe you 
that's one of the things I'm talking with a friend right now. She that's why we have all this awareness stuff. That's why we did the interview so people could learn more about you and what you're going through. Yeah, I mean, if you see me in the yeah. street, you're like totally normal. If you see me even in my wheelchair, I'm not wearing my neck brace. Mm-hmm. Time you won't see my leg braces because they're usually under a skirt. And I look normal, but people look at me and they go, oh, you have such a great attitude about it. It's like, well, yeah, but I don't really have a You have to. Yeah, it's like, it's like have I to. can be in bed and crying. Mm-hmm. I can be in bed crafting on my bad days when I can't get out of bed, you know? And I can be out and trying to make a difference in the world, even if it's not what I had wanted to do, right? You know, still emotional about what I can't do. I mean, you know, I'm still trying to fight the fight for the law school. Put another phone call into the law school, put more calls into more lawyers, and I keep on getting the same response that, yeah, it doesn't sound right, but it's at their discretion, so we can't force it. I was hoping to go to San Diego this weekend to, like, I mean, this summer. Keep trying. Keep trying. You never know. And oh, now yeah. maybe things are changing. Maybe yeah. things are changing because of the whole corona thing. You know, people yeah, are taking is, is people are taking it, online it, classes and, and, and stuff. So, you know, people are well, graduating. I, have I mean, I have, comp- I have schools that are people willing to let me finish the five units. Yeah. It's Thomas Jefferson not willing to award me the degree and take those five units because they said it's been too long since I matriculated. First, they tried to say that the so exception didn't apply to me. I know, but again, like I said, like rules are changing every day right now. So I know, and that's why I had wanted to go in person. I had, you know, we had planned for a summer trip this summer to San Diego, and I was going to try to show up in person and say, "Hey, here I am. Explain to me what harm it is to let me finish my degree." I mean, I'm not sitting for the bar. So I'm not going to be lowering the bar passage rate, which is kind of low anyway, but I'm not going to be lowering it. So it's not any harm. If anything, it's a benefit to say you graduated somebody, you know, if you who uh, advanced somebody who has a disability, right? Mm-hmm. It's not hurting you any, but it lets me be a better advocate in the sense that, you know, lawyers, politicians, and everybody else look at you differently when you are have a legal degree. I mean, they shouldn't, but they do. It's just everybody, same thing, like when you go for a job interview, right? They look at what colleges you went to, they look at what your grades were, they look at you know your transcripts. Should they necessarily look at every little detail? Not necessarily, but they do and they make a judgment, preconceived judgment based on what's on paper. Well, having that JD gets me into a certain doorway before I even arrive. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm mean, trying to make the most out of my advocacy. You know, I'm now joined this week. I got accepted to be part of the uh, EDS Society has a new program. An right. education program for patient advocates, and I got accepted into their program. Mm-hmm. Um, Echo, Echo, Echo Advocacy, and then um, I also got appointed to the uh, advocacy committee for my senior gravis, which both are important to me because both agencies were the number one, the number one sites that I would go to to get information when I got first diagnosed. I, mean, I can't tell you how many times I'd actually send, I'd actually bring the computer or bring an iPad and show the doctor a video on their site to encourage them to give me some particular treatment. You know, so yeah. it's very exciting to be part of the groups that have provided so much education to me. You know, and right. then of course my doctors and my family. I mean, because even my family couldn't believe. Like I remember my mother going, "You are blaming everything on EDS. It can't all be EDS." And I'm like, come back. I come back from my first symposium conference in, in LA, and I have this Venn diagram. I go, um, Mom, you remember you told me it can't all be EDS? And I show this Venn diagram of like all the things I can cross over into Ellers Delos, and pretty much everything I could check off on. She's like, oh, maybe it is EDS. <laughs> you know, so it's been not just for my they, they don't know because they're not you, you know what I'm saying? They don't know. Right. Well, it's hard to, you know, unless you understand EDS, it's really hard to comprehend how invasive it can be to the body, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you really break it down, you know, Ehlers-Danlos is a connective tissue disorder. Well, our collagen is in every part of our body. Every organ has collagen. Our eyes, our ears, our, our, our mouth, our, our every part of our body has some sort of collagen. So mm-hmm. once that stretches, even the slightest, that doesn't go back for us, which mm-hmm. means now that joint is moving more and also the muscles are stiffening trying to compensate for the movement. So now you're getting muscular pain, you're getting joint pain from the movement, and you're getting the um, relaxation, where you're, like this, like this, like where things are sliding in and out. You know, right. so, a lot of people don't get diagnosed, and a lot of times uh, they used to use a flexibility test, but that has gone, uh, as, as of 2017, they don't use that as a barometrics anymore, measurement, because as you get older, your flexibility decreases. I mean, I can still pass a flexibility test, but I'm not the norm of EDSers. I'm much more progressed, but 
it's because I did a lot of sports. I mean, I was diagnosed late and damage and injury that I did to myself from the adaptive sports that I did. And it's also positivity, you know, the energy. Yeah, that. I mean, yeah. It's, it's also it's, you. I, I'm like okay a lot of people. Being progressed because I had experiences that I, I would never have had before. Right, I mean. Exactly. I know I can't do the Taekwondo that I used to do, mm. but I know I also had a kick-ass time doing it, you know, and I, and I love doing it, and I'm glad I did it. I'm bummed I didn't get to that black belt, but I was close, you know, and it, and it was really great, and even though I progressed from being on crutches and being on my walker to my wheelchair in Taekwondo, I still figured out a way to make it work, right? I mean, if it wasn't for my breathing issues, I would probably still be doing it, you know, because right. I've adapted yoga. I've been doing a, the Mayan 10 company has been hosting a lot of different types of classes, for free for people um, during the during the COVID nineteen, and one of those has been yoga. Another one's been dance, and I've been adapting it for what I can do. You know, just instead of the downward dog, I do it child pose, right? Instead of trying to stand because I can't watch my body and be mindful of my body and do the stretch without yeah looking something. Um, so I just adapt it for what I can do. Child. <laughs> And so, I mean, I remember when we were in Mexico and they were doing yoga by the, by the ocean, I went out, of course, I was a little late because it's early morning, I'm not my, my forte. And I go out in my wheelchair, I have all my braces on, and on my you service. But, but you don't sleep though. You know, I see you. I have, I have insomnia, I do, and it's not good. And I have oh my God. I was like, well, are you still up? Because California time, <laughs> it's still late. <laughs> So I have bouts of insomnia. Part of it's from the pain, you know, because reality is, is most pain medications don't touch my pain levels. So if there is a pressure change or weather change, I'm SOL and I'm in a lot of pain. Um, and yes, I do meditation, and but the whole um, COVID has kind of made things a lot harder because I can't get my acupuncture that I was getting weekly. Yeah, I want to I wanna let, let them know like how, how COVID affected you because, you know, is it really My pain level has been increased you know, quite a lot. Like now, so, um, I'm trying to like redirect myself. And it's hard for it's hard for you because it's hard for you because you can't even go outside now. You know what I'm saying? No, I as my you husband should. says, I'm virtually grounded <laughs> until they have a vaccine. Mm -hmm. And he's not wrong. I mean, I don't like the answer. I don't like that answer because I don't mm -hmm. want to be stuck. I mean, I'm already feeling the cabin fever. You know, yeah. uh, especially like. Because with my business, right, I was going to farmer's markets, I was going to craft shows, you know, the summertime is coming around. I mean, I, last summer I was at almost all the Friday night series, music series that we had in our town. You know, exactly. so, oh, thank you, sweetheart. So not having access to those things is definitely making it challenging. I mean, I think the only reason why I am surviving is because of Zoom. You know, I've been getting on regularly with my friends and fellow advocates. You know, when I came back from D.C., bunch of the people that I was there with uh, started a group so we all get on regularly and chat and hang out and I've met some other great other people that have disabilities that we're trying to uh, create a virtual uh, craft and self-help day so that we can teach ways that I've adapted crafts for myself and teach new ways to do adaptive yoga or adaptive dance um, she also does Reiki and and works with stones and talking about different things like that trying to really empower people right because reality is if you Whatever it is, whether it's mental health issues, whether it's cognitive, you know, pain, cognitive issues, or whether it's pain or all the above, if you don't have a place to direct that energy, mm -hmm. it's gonna consume you. So for right. me, you know, it's my crafts, you know, and and, and my stem education yeah. crafts. Yeah. Not that my kids you know, don't keep me busy too, but you know, it is definitely, uh, and of course, trying to empower the younger generation right? because I was very fortunate that I wasn't labeled disabled until I started, right before I started college. My parents didn't treat me as disabled. They treated me to just, you know, just figure it out and make it work, you know, and um, they were tough about it, but it's okay because that was, it wasn't anything that, I didn't put any barriers. I didn't see barriers. I didn't see any walls, right? I just saw, okay, that's a hill. I gotta get over that hill. No, oh, no worries. How do we get around it? You know, so that mentality is not when most people get. Right. And I have a very supportive family. We have a thick sense of humor about my disability. You know, like we joke around about replacing getting mommy a new body. And, you know, that's where my son's comment of going, getting it from Instacart instead of, uh, instead of Costco. <laughs> <laughs> my husband always says, let's go shopping at Costco. And my son yesterday, two days ago, goes, 
Well, let's all have, well, let's get one from Instagram, Instacart, Mom. <laughs> so like, it's so innovative. Because of COVID, you know, my, we're getting caught Instacart all the time. Yeah. Like, so that um, makes sense. You have to. It's you know, it's definitely. You know, my older son, he'll check in on me regularly. He goes, Mom, I know COVID has a real impact on you, on everybody mentally. And I just want to make sure that you're okay. I'm just checking in on you. You know, so it's it's kind of interesting yeah. in a way how they work. You know, they have very but much. You know, but you know, but you know what it is. I feel like it doesn't affect us as much because we kind of work from home. So we're kind of used to like working from home. You know, like you do a lot of meetings at home, like Zoom meetings and gatherings. So even though like you can't go out, it didn't affect as much. But of course, we should still go out and like get some right. fresh air and like interact with people, you know, because we're that type, that type, you know? Right. I think the biggest thing for me is my boys are scared of something yeah. happening to me. They're scared of doing anything because they're afraid that they would get COVID and bring it home and that it would kill me. That's mm-hmm. their word, not my word, but likely it would put me in the hospital. I mean, my nurse and I have no doubt it would put me in the hospital and most likely on a respirator. I mean, you know, not to have a down moment. But that's reality. I mean, my lungs don't function most of the time. I test at that 50% functionality. The past three times I've been to the hospital this year, it was borderline from being intubated as, as it was prior to COVID. So mm-hmm. I'm sure, you know, I mean, the other day I was hanging, um, trying to stand on, on the nightstand and hang my uh, backdrop before mm-hmm. I had a meeting. And then I couldn't breathe afterwards and I had to even buy back to breathe. So, I mean, reality is if I get COVID, I'm going to have a tough time with it. And so my kids are scared about getting it and bringing it home to me. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a couple of scout camps open at the end of the summer, and my son won't go because he doesn't want to risk something happening and bringing and getting me sick. You know. So yeah. At least, at least they know what's going on. So that that was really good. It is. It just breaks my heart that you know. It always breaks my heart that my kids worry about me. You know, they mm-hmm. shouldn't have to worry about their mom. You know, mm-hmm. especially at their age, but they worry about me. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it, it's. That's very sweet of them. They love sweet. you. But it still makes me sad that they have to, I mean, they, I, when I had my first meeting with Representative Lofgren, Ethan was with me and she asked me, what is my biggest concern or what is my biggest issue? And I said, well, mm-hmm. health care and the fact that my children are worried that their mom is going to die and worried that the next time in the hospital, something's going to happen to me, you know, and now my husband who wants to retire looking at health care plans and noticing there's nothing that covers my medication. Like none of these you know, regular state health care plans will cover the kind of treatments that I get. So he's kind of like, uh, I don't think I can retire now with your medical treatments, you know, um, and so, and which is a real issue. But so it's sad that my kids worry so much about me. I mean, it's wonderful. They, they help take care of me. They help, you know, they make they make waffles, they'll bring me the food. They try to make sure I drink because I don't think I'm very bad at that. You know, they try to you know, remind mom when I'm doing too much or if I'm slurring, I need to go lay down, you know, so they're very good about that. Um, it's just, I feel bad, you know, as a mom, we always feel guilty about something. I mean, you know, moms in general feel guilty. You know, we feel like we right. do something better. So being a type A personality, I feel guilty for what I can't do anymore with them. Like I can't drive, right? Because I haven't driven in four years, that still drives me crazy, not being able to drive. So I feel guilty for the things that I can't do already. So that gets compounded to being a parent with a disability and not being able to do everything that I want to do, you know? So Something's that's, that's beeping. definitely. What? Something's beeping. Oh, that's my other oxygen machine. I'm on my office, I'm on my house oxygen, but I forgot to turn off the battery operated one. Oh. When I went to go take pictures, I had you know my, my portable oxygen concentrator, oh. which you need took to me like it? a year to get, and a lot of battling. Do you need to switch it? Do you... Oh, I'm on I'm, I'm on my house one. I just forgot to turn it off. Okay. Yeah, that was one of those things where I had to fight the insurance company, and they were like, "Well, you can have portable tanks." They go, "Well, that's not gonna get me around all day." And their answer was, "Our job isn't to get you to school; it's just to get you to the doctor." I'm like, well, that's good enough, but my doctor is like an all-day thing if I'm going to San Francisco and taking the, uh, the bar system. Oh, yeah. And uh, it was a big fight, and I had to appeal it. So how, do, I, how, how does that work? Like, you have to refill it? Like, how does that work? So um, what I actually use is this one. It's a battery-operated machine, uh-huh. and I have a bunch of extra batteries. And I so it's an oxygen concentrator. So it takes the air, and it, it re- takes the air in, and it concentrates the air to be more oxygenated. So mm. it's not quite the same thing as having tanks, but... I can't carry tanks. I right. can't carry extra weight. I have enough. So, so how do you, you recharge them? You recharge yes. that? So I have like about six different batteries, and you know we had to purchase those on our own. 
and then I have a whole station where I can recharge all my batteries so I can have it for the whole day. You know, so wherever I'm at, I'm always having extra batteries type of a thing. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, like when we go camping, we have a generator now so that I can run my BiPAP and charge my batteries type mm -hmm. of a thing. I'm so much fun to go camping when I got like a 20 things to take with me. Now we can, maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> right, I know. It's, well, I feel really bad. My little guy, this would be his last year to do a Weeblos camp, a Weeblos resident camp. So you only get to do Weeblos resident camp as a Weeblos. When he went to one last year as a Weeblos one, this, has been his, this would have been his second one as Weeblos two, but it's been canceled. So he's really bummed and he's he really bummed about but it. But this year, everybody, everybody's home. So there's nothing that we could do. I know, you know, and I'm trying we to didn't, get- we didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't we, we didn't expect this. We didn't expect this. You know, I was still in California at that time. We didn't expect this. Right. Well, I mean, I was in DC, which against, against a lot of my family's wishes, because I went to DC by myself. I was just insane. <laughs> yeah, so I know. Brave. I remember that. It was insane. You know, when I got out, you know, it didn't feel insane until I was in the Dallas airport having to change planes, having to walk my dog, and having a migraine. Okay, that was not fun. And I had to like literally walk him and take a shot right after I walked him. Mm -hmm. So I was going, at that moment I was thinking, okay, now this is insane. This is really stupid. But you did but, it, you um, made it back, so I'm happy. I made it back, you know, um, it, it was a challenge. I ended up in the hospital in DC as well. Um, that wasn't fun either. Oh, you didn't tell me about that. So, you know, I had that weekend before I went to DC, I had been at the, uh, at the Palo Alto of Madrigal Bridge Park. Mm -hmm. So I had kind of done a lot of work to do one of the steam programs there with the kids. And I normally would have gone out a day before a conference, mm -hmm. right? So I'd have a day to recover from traveling. Mm -hmm. But I didn't because I wanted to be at the STEM program for the kids at the, at the Madrigal Bridge Park, which is a really amazing park. And they're building about 11 different ones across the area, across the community. And these parks are designed for kids and people of all ages and all abilities, including like if you actually get to a slide in your wheelchair, you know, I mean, somebody has to go get your wheelchair for you, but otherwise, you know, you can go down a slide, you can go on swings, you can go on to like double levels of the treehouse, And then we work with the kids with all different abilities. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing some of my STEM program with them. And uh, that week, because it was Marriage Disease Week, we chose to do something with um, making the DNA sequences. And I did wiki sticks because the kids can push wiki sticks together, even whatever your dexterity is, right? Somebody can at least push it together. If they can't hold it, like I can help them, but they can do some of it, right? Because it's, it's a pretty textile uh, device, uh, ability to move around with it. So we chose that, and then we made a little sand out of water bottles and, and, and skewers. So that took a lot out of me. And then the next day I flew out. So I didn't have any day between, re between my conference, between my activities, and the conference. So when I was at the FDA hearing, I started to pass out with my uh, dysautonomia and I was falling out of my chair and popping back up again. And, you know, I was trying to like, you know, make light of it kind of a thing. And then apparently I must have been unconscious for a while because that dog started barking and kind of waking me up. And then that kind of notified everybody else that something was wrong. Yeah. And they called the paramedics and then apparently they, I tried to do the salt and the Gatorade and everything else, but my blood pressure didn't come up. And apparently I was very pale looking and so they had me go to the ER and they admitted me for the night, uh, but they didn't find anything other than needing fluids. I mean, their option, they, they were, the, the doctor comes in, neurologist comes in, and she goes, I'm on a 50-50 level here of whether to keep you here and do an infusion for the next three days. I go, I did not fly across this country to go and sit in this hospital for the next three days and miss out on my opportunity to be on, on the hill and uh, be here to lobby for disability rights. No, I'm leaving tomorrow, and if there's a problem, I'll come back. Well, there was a problem, but it was on Friday of the week, so I didn't bother going back because I knew I was flying home the next day. Yeah. So Friday, I, that Friday of the conference, I was actually passing out in and out of it at the NIH hearing, at the NIH building, which I missed that much much of the activities at the NIH building. And ironically, it was actually at the just on a table that I was in and out of consciousness. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was an experience. I did overnight at the hospital there and uh, didn't know anything yet about COVID. Right, so I didn't know what, I'm glad I didn't know what I didn't know at yeah. the time. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> you know, yeah, and especially because I had, I had lost my N95 mask, but I can't wear most of my N95 masks. So I actually learned how to sell this, this during COVID. I sew masks now. Yeah, prior to that, were, we were supposed to talk about that. Prior to this, any? I wasn't using, I, prior to this, I had a nice sewing machine, 
that I never really use except to occasionally hem pants. But I wanted to make masks. So we started making masks for some frontline yeah, workers. Told me. This one's actually for my nurse that I did here. Oh, I really love that one. That's really beautiful. And then you know it has a pocket, so big enough that we can put in a filter or yeah. another mask. Mm -hmm. Like you know, whenever you go into the doctor's office now, they want you to put in the surgical mask. So this is big enough to put a surgical mask in. It has a uh, you know bar here for the nose, but a shape to the face. And then it has an ear loop, but then also will have a string to hold it in the back. And then I kind of did a little bit different than other people. I actually sew elastic on the inside. Mm -hmm. so that it doesn't come apart in the wash, but it gives a better fit on the side of the face. So like when it's on the face, it's actually against the face now. Yeah, I really, this is beautiful. This is a really good design. I love the design. So I tried to combine, I combined a couple of different designs, you know, maybe maker and engineer type person I had to kind of figure out different things because I want you know most of the masks stick out stick out on the side and I have a small face right and and the nurses and the medical professionals don't want elastic sticking out because elastic doesn't last through washes um, my N95 mask that I never wear because I can't breathe in it um, all have elastic on the side you know so I wanted something that would be as close to the face as possible right so like this one is one of my, one of my smaller ones you know, and then it's close to the face as possible. Right down. I love your designs. Thank you. So it's easy to put it on because you know you're not struggling to tie it. But now you have the tie in the back. So you can always take it off and leave it on your neck if you need to. But you, tie also means you get more of a secure fit, right? Because the closer it is to your face, the better it's going to be. And then there's room for a filter inside of you. So I have the um, 2.5 microns filters as well as the uh, melted woven fabric that the CDC was recommending for disposable masks. And so it's easy to get on and off and yet you can breathe. You know, and so that was a big issue for me because I never wear my N95 masks because I can't breathe. And I never wear masks before too. Now everywhere I go I have to wear And I was supposed to wear them before. I mean, my, doctor, my doctor's response was really funny. He's like, wear a mask whenever you're around somebody who's sick. Or may potentially be sick, and I'm like, and I'm supposed to know this how? I'm like, you know, I'm around kids all the time, and I'm and and I'm never getting, I'm doing all these things. How am I supposed to know somebody's sick? So I ask every single person. So he's like, well, pretty much anytime you're in a crowd, I'm like, okay, that's pretty much all the time, you know. And so people Thank couldn't you. hear me through the mask on the side of my microphone, and especially if my MG is kicking in because then I talk even quieter. So it was not. I, I was messed all that. I lost one of my N95 masks in DC. I lost my neck brace in DC too. Um, I left it at one of the representative's offices, offices. But so these at least, they may not be as good as N95, but I can actually wear. You know, in fact, you know, my husband comes home the other day and goes, you're right, we can't breathe in these things. He goes, can you make me one too? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I started making them for, I made them for nurses and I made them for um, other Wait, parts. do you have any other designs? I might get one from you too. It looks beautiful. I have a ton of designs. All those fabrics back there, can you see that? Yeah. There's a ton of fabrics I back see, there. I see it, but... So, <laughs> I have a, I'll a, to get a it. new thing that have dog ones and some... Uh, I had to get my zebra stuff though. And my son yeah. had me make him one that's like space, space kind. So I've had some fabric donated to me, which I use to donate back to people like in the community. So uh, when our Chamber of Commerce required that all the people who deliver food had to have masks, um, I helped make some for them. But like, this is one of my, not for you, but one of my one of my favorite patterns. Because it's like, it's got these really cool flowers. Wow, it looks nice. So that's a pretty one. Um, my son wanted this one. So I bought this fabric too. Yeah, this is really cool. Try, you know, there's, it's hard to find a lot of fabrics. They're really crafty. <laughs> So this is, you know, a, a, uh, half on wheels. <laughs> that's why I have that name, man. You know. Gotta plug, plug it in. <laughs> that is totally. I am. Guys, if you need masks, if you need masks, wait, is it online? Are you selling them online? I am. So I, I just started selling them online, and, and the concept being is, I, you buy one, and I donate one, right? So that people buying it helps me buy more fabric, right? Because one of the things is that I've been giving to nurses and stuff and frontline workers of things that are fabric that is donated to us it's not necessarily something they want to wear all day right so i'd much rather be able to go out and buy something like this which is much nicer you know and right. you know people more people's personality right or like i've had three nurses now really like my um this one which is the ekg i, I really like that one 
you know, I might get one. I'm not gonna like it too because it happens also be great for the autonomia. But you know, it's what I also like too is a very nice cotton, and then I just got this really thin cotton. So I was really trying to find something gray and brown and black. And I haven't found black yet, but this is just like a dark gray, but it's a really thin and breathable, right? So my thing is, if it's not breathable, people aren't gonna wear it. You know. Yeah. It's, it's I just I just ordered this this one online. And I don't even know how this works. You know how these work with the valves? Look. Yeah, so I have those before, but I have a heart, so you, those are filters you change, and then the valve is supposed to wash out. Really? Yeah. So I've had those before, yeah. but again, I end up not. Yeah, it comes off. Yeah, I'm not comfortable. I actually like the mask that I made for myself, which is a zebra mask. Um, but I'm making a new one eventually for myself because I got a new zebra print that I like. Because uh, I got this really cute zebra print. Yeah. But I just got some things for dog lovers too, and stuff like that. Let me like see that. the dog. Let me see the dog lover. I just got a bunch for dog lovers. <laughs> so no, like, where, no, where, where could they get them? Where could they get them? I get them online. Most of no, the time. where could they order? Where could? Oh, the, from my website, crafts, uh, uh, craftingforacause.net. Same website from oh. last time. Then. Yeah, got these little cute little paw prints. I love it. I love the black one. Actually, I love both. And then um, my niece, I got the volleyball because she's a volleyball player. I also got this other one for dogs too. Yeah, take it easy. This one is cute because I like it because it says um, love and the uh, and dog and the companion and a whole bunch of little cute little sayings about dogs. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> In fact, today is a year anniversary of PETA graduating, PETA and I graduating from our service dog program. Mm, congrats. So, yeah, I, I came up on Facebook and a year today. Memories? We, yeah. Memories. Came up, I didn't, can't believe it's been a year. And so it's been a year today since we had a public access test, and so that entailed also passing a test for urban citizen and canine citizen. So um, it's been a year already. I can't believe Time that. flies. It does. I can't believe he's getting older. It scared me. It's like he's been with me for six and a half years, and I just can't imagine it without him. So never had anxiety until like I started thinking about what happens. I can't have my service open anymore. So I have quite a lot of but. <laughs> We'll Enjoy, the moment. Enjoy, the moment. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment. Well, you know what? He's really, he's with me 24 7. And when I'm stuck in bed, he's always in bed with me. Mm. You know, and, and I'm in bed half the time. And then, you know, and so as much crafting as I have here, I have a craft table upstairs too with a whole bunch of my stuff. And I sometimes move up and down the stairs with my stuff. Um, but so he's always with me. If I'm down here, then he's in the landing and he's nearby. So he's always with me 24 seven. And then he's also, whenever I'm in the hospital, he's with me. Poor dog is a little bit too used to ambulances because when I went into the ambulance in the, at, at, in the, at the FDA hearing, he just hopped right into the into the ambulance and like squeezed in between the bench and made to get as close to me as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. And the time uh, like, oh, he has no problem with the ambulances. I'm like, yeah, unfortunately, no. I said, my family as a whole is a little too used to them. More so than I'd like. So, uh, but yeah, so he's been with me. I've had him since he was eight weeks old. So, and he turned six last November, so he's getting older. Mm. Not gonna win, hopefully he's got some more year left in him, but. So it was kinda, I can't believe it's been a year already since we graduated from the program. But yeah, so back to the mask. I started doing it because people said they needed it. And I didn't. You're doing, you're doing a great thing. Like, it came out great. I didn't expect that. I'm now. slow. I'm not very fast and it hurts my neck and back, so I can't do that many at a time. Yeah. So what I did do though, is I did teach some classes to people on Zoom on how to do them. So that- you should, Do you have a recorder? You should post it, you should post on YouTube. I don't think I'm any different than most other, most other people though. It I mean, doesn't matter, this is you. You know, you're building a brand. You know? At least you yeah, do. Yeah, I know, people tell me. And then I just feel like, well, what, why would somebody watch me versus somebody else? Except for that, uh, I do found you want some. Me, do you want me to? Do you want me to take a look at it? You want me to put some? You want me to help you with your YouTube? 
Yeah, I don't have much on my YouTube. I really have. I, you, I saw you've been uploading recently, though. Two months, three months, you've been uploading. Yeah, I had it because well, originally when I created it, it was because I needed to show people how to make some of the bracelets. Because on the My Intent site, people couldn't understand how to make the um, cobra stitch or the snake stitch, right? They didn't know how to do it. Or uh, I also do now with the um, Kumihimo boards. So, and I actually want to do a class with the Kumihimo boards. If you need help, if you need help, let me know. I can help you man like take care of that. Because again, because I'm doing so much YouTube stuff right now, I'm getting better and better at it. Awesome. And by helping you, I'm helping. You know, I'm learning as well. You know, what I'm saying even though I'm doing it myself, so it all works out. It takes time, but you know, at least I know a little bit more than you, and then <laughs> I'll help. Sure you do. Like, I know like how you're helping. You like, 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 like how, like how you're helping me with Zoom. It's like, I know a little bit, right? So I've also used the Viva video and I used that one because I made a video for my son's teacher. We had all the kids, well, a bunch of kids send in pictures and then they put in um, essays like that they wrote for the teacher, but I wanted to make it into a video. So I used that to make it into like a video in the slides and making it move around and, you know, has the nice cool transitions. Cause I noticed that Photoshop only had like a few transitions and I wanted like it to look really cool and upbeat and stuff. So I used that. Um, only time I, and I ended up having to use YouTube when I uploaded the uh, interview that our, our webinar for the uh, when we did with uh, Autism Speak and um, Magical Bridge. Oh yeah, you, you told me what what is the difference between the webinar and the and the Zoom that you're doing. So the webinar really is a discussion between a small panel that everybody else can hear in and listen on to, but they're not seen on it and they can't actually chat in there. They can ask two questions but you can actually have a wider audience. So in a webinar- But I seen, I seen like webinar, I seen web webinars with chat though. Right, so webinars can choose whether or not they want the chat open. They I see. They get to control that. So you know, what, and they I, also control the Q&A. Don't you have control over that? You do, you but the difference between um, a meeting is you can have like uh, up to 100, depending on your account, 100 people on at the same time where you can see everybody's faces, right? Mm. So the webinar, you don't see everybody else's faces. The only so you should. So you should upload your web. You should upload your zooms with like the groups of people that you're doing. I think you could. I could fix it up. You know, you could upload it. Like not upload them raw, but fix it up with a title or whatever, and then you right. can upload it if you have the time to. Right. I mean, you so know? what we're trying to do next, I guess, the twelfth is get some uh, people together. Zebra. We're calling zebra creators people with rare diseases trying to teach workshops to people that have disabilities or families of people with disabilities right? yeah and if you don't have time to upload i have the time right now i can okay. help you upload and you know put the key right keywords up and that way we could get some views and attract attraction for that the keywords is out and i was working too with the youtube was to do you use their ai system to create a uh, closed caption you know because it, auto it automatically does that yeah it but see now the problem is if you have a person like me who slurs yeah. It does mine didn't come out. Everybody else's came out. So do, you, do, you, do you know how to do that though? I don't know how to do that. Yeah, so I did that and I was able to also go in and change it so that, because sometimes the words wouldn't line up with the picture. So you can actually move it and slide the words to the actual frame. No so way. I was, that, I'm not, I didn't know that. That's good to know. I played around with that. Yeah, so each every brilliant. word that comes in is coded with a time, a time spot. But if you edit the, the actual video part, then the time slot of the the voice part doesn't always line up exactly, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that I had to work on. And then also, like, you didn't want one person's voice speaking and another person to come on the screen, right? So I had to kind of change that around a little bit. And then my recognition, especially when I'm tired or I haven't taken enough of my mind to grab this medication or near fusion time, I'll mm -hmm. slur a lot. So my recognition doesn't come out as well. I'm kind of screwed right now because recognition doesn't come out as well and I can't type anymore because. I have numbness in my fingers and I can't feel them. So I'm having like a battle between which way I gotta go. Um, so it's been a challenge. Which has been like slowly uploading my, my website. It's been a very slow process. So everything takes time. Stop it does. Everybody's going through the same thing. <laughs> it does. It takes time. And you know, I have some orders. And the, it, the problem is, is that I only have a certain amount of cycles, right? Of energy. And that's like the hardest problem is that I want to do way more they want my body wants to do mm -hmm. and that's always a constant but battle. you should have your rest you should have your rest you know i know i should have a rest but my body wants to rest way more than i want to rest and yeah. that's that's where the battle comes in right because you know 
all my disorders cause, cause are symptomatic of chronic fatigue syndrome, right? And so that all wears me down very quickly. So a small amount of activity wears me out very quickly, more so than like a normal person, an antibiotic person. I'm trying to get out of the habit of saying normal person when I refer to people that are not able to disabled. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, I mean, picking up one, like, this is a, still sounds silly, but when I got my hair cut, part of it was because of the fact is I was getting to the point where I had to choose between taking a shower or washing my hair because I did not have enough energy, would not have enough energy to take a shower and blow dry my hair when it was long. You know, mm-hmm. now I like, okay, you look, you look great. That's amazing. And you highlight it, like I said. <laughs> hey, I'm getting older here. I got to do some things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I'm feeling my age, man. Although today I'm wearing my zebra shirt that I made. I don't think you can see it. You made that? Oh my god. I made this today. You make this? You made these too? Yeah. Do you have the press at home? I have a press and I have I have a mini press and I have a Cricut maker. Oh my oh. god! I I'm gonna message you to design some stuff for me. So this you know, and amazing. then you know, I've been this using awesome. font bundles a lot because they give you a lot of really good deals and they get and they give you commercial licenses to use their stuff. So like this, you know, I got a couple of zebras, right? And I got a commercial license to use it. And their fonts, when they go on sale, you can get their fonts and you can use it and you get commercial commercial licenses for it. Wait, right? what is it like? What is the thing called? What font is bundles? Called? Yeah. And font and design bundles. And so they have SVG ones and ping files of everything. And so it's great. Like the thing I made for the um, young boy today, let me bring it up on my finger. Um, you know, if, if I actually have the files to it because I mean, a couple of commercial rights. It was one of the things I hated with the cricket company is that you never got your, you never got commercial rights to things. So, you see this one? This is the shirt I'm yeah. him. And then this was his bottle. Wow. And then. Uh, Easily repeat. <laughs> oh, this is my zebra mask. Yeah. I love it. It matches with your zebra. <laughs> Did you take that today? Well, I mean, it is EDS month, you know. And zebra is a symbol for EDS. Well, zebra is also rare diseases, but it's also the. Do you took that picture? Do you take that picture today? The selfie yeah. today? I took it as I was in the car going to his house. You know, um, so because this is my first time wearing my zebra shirt, I just thought the zebra was so cute when I saw it. I had to get it, and so yeah. I mean, and I'm sure I'll make sure for people with it because it's a really cute zebra. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love it. And so, but yeah, so. What do you, what do you have on today? I see you got like. Oh, I got jewelry <laughs> so I exactly got jewelry. So I got last time we didn't see that many. I know. I you know what it is? I try everything out to make sure it works and I try new designs. Alright, so this one says empower. Gold doesn't last on me though, because my, my skin tone, but this is empower with a new uh, stamp that has like a fire for the uh has a fire stamp. So it looks like fire. So I put fire for the O for empower. And then um, when I was in uh, D.C., I made this one for rare diseases. I put my lava beads from my er, my aroma, aroma, aroma essential oil, oils. But then I put together, um, we can make a difference. And then zebra for Elder Danlos and uh, the snowflake is the Mycenae gravis. And then I have my um, amethyst on here because amethyst is like my stone. Uh, it has to do with probably creativity and also um, I just love amethyst. I feel strong. I my, my stone. I just like it a lot. I still have my chakra bracelet, which I probably had back then. I make the chakra bracelets, and then more amethyst bracelets that I have. And, and you then have then a necklace have too. What? Necklace. Oh yeah, this is my zebra one that I I was trying to sell as a fundraiser for Elo Janos. So it's a right. It's a it's a silver sort of plate. It's a silver. I can't get off. It's really cute. No, we could see it. We could see it. You don't have to take it off. It's a, it's a zebra heart. And there's not too many cute zebra heart things, but there's a zebra heart and it's rhinestones and it's silver. One silver. So, these are all on my website. Yeah. I see it. So, I've been trying to, so I've been trying to sell all these and then 20 to, depending on which price I can get, 20 to 30% was being donated back to the EDS Society as part of the fundraiser for them. You're always giving back. What? You're always giving back. Yeah, I well, that's how the world goes, right? I mean, if you don't give back, these are non-profit groups, right? They don't have a lot of funds coming in, so every little thing helps. Plus, you know, Elder Daniel Society actually funds research. 
you know, it was their own funding that actually opened up the first EDS clinic in the United States. And that was only about you know, four or five years ago. And it was opened up and paid for by the funds that the EDS Society raises. But these, they need these funds, right? Because the, a good example is that for dysautonomia international, they've been trying to raise funds to get NIH study done on, <coughs> bless you, on the Thank benefit you. of um, infusions. So right. I happen to know by, by experience, my infusions helped me with my dysautonomia attacks. And it is known and under, well, widely understood that it does, but there hasn't been enough studies done like through the NIH to actually prove it to get insurance companies to cover it. Right? So they've been trying to raise money for years to get enough funding to get these tests done that they need to get done to get approval for these, you know, not Orphanax because that's just a little bit different, but to get approval for these things that are known to work but are not, you know, they're off-label usage. And right. so um, anytime I can give back to a group that's been trying to do those kind of things, it's always a good thing. Yeah. Especially awesome. too, because there's not too many groups that know about it. Yeah, and it's a good thing that you're doing it. And it's great that we're creating awareness, you know, and putting it out there. Because I, I didn't know about it until you, you spoke of it. Right. A lot of people don't. I mean, there's a, there's a few people in the public media and, and actor and actresses that have the disease, but they're not there many. I mean, technically, EDS affects one out of 5,000. Okay. But reality is it probably affects even more than that. People misdiagnosed with fibromyalgia or they're being told it's in their head or they're being told that, you know, arthritis or, or a whole sort of like lupus, you know, um, or Lyme disease. I mean, I came up 10 times I was tested Lyme disease as a kid, you know, and they don't get the treatment or they can't find anybody who knows what to do with them. I mean, I've had a physical therapist like look at my hands and go, um, yeah, and I don't, oh, I work, I can't work with you, I can't work with you. And they touch my hands and go, oh, no, I can't work with you. I don't know what to do with that, you know, because they can feel the movement in the hand but that kind of freaks them out. You know? And then they're like, oh, yeah, no, I don't get it. I don't think I'm capable of that. Yeah. So, uh, I think this is the last time we talked too, I got a port put in because my veins kept on popping. So I have a port too, but that's also the other loose. And that's almost flipped over now because of my connection tissue. What about your rings? Those are actually braces. Oh, really? So I've lost the other ones, but they're actually silver ring splints. They are one of the few things that actually hold my fingers or helps decrease the hyperextension of my fingers. They even have one that's called EDS splint, but my knuckles got too big for it um and so they help with the hyperextension so they keep my fingers from popping too much like my fingers will hyperextend and they'll pop out of place so right. it tries to keep it from popping too much got it. So those what, are, what's the other thing that you want to share with us today you, you have like that whole pile on oh so now now that you ask <laughs> <laughs> so it's the end of our analysis awareness month but i'm still making sales for eds society so these are the ones that I've been making for the zebra malachite, which is a little zebra, and then also doing some with the zebra ribbon. Yeah. And then I even, I mean, it could be anything, but these are the biggest ones I've been selling the most of. And then this one I just sold, this is a wrap that's on a memory wire, and it's a zebra jasper. And it's Tibetan and silver uh, bead caps. And that wraps around, and then it has a little charm in the center. So I've been selling these. And then also the um, little bangles. And people can choose what charms to put on them. The most common ones though have been though have been the ED, uh, EDS ribbon, which also is actually for a couple of other things. The, the um, zebra ribbon and the zebra charm and then live, love, laugh, and uh, hope have been like the most common to be putting on these things. So I've been selling these as well. Um, and also zebra compression socks. So, you know, I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> I can't lift my leg up. But <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to move my leg braces, but they're not moving. But uh, so you can press the socks that are have the zebra print. But when that's you made them too. Cool about them, you know, because anybody who has this autonomia is supposed to wear compression socks. But many make compression socks. So you make, them, you, make them, you make them too? No, I don't. I, get, I buy those. <laughs> <laughs> you but make I everything. I make cards. I make cards though. You know, I'm in the middle of making a bunch of cards. Like I have a whole bunch here, like I'm a half made cards here, but I do make cards. I make a lot of cards as well. Um, yeah, like this is um this is about two cards. Like I make a handmade uh handmade cards. Yeah. Oh that I love. I love I love I love your work. Oh my yeah. god. So these you are inspire, samples. You inspire you inspire a lot of us. Thank you. I, I emboss the stamps and then I do watercolor on them and things like that. So um, 
I'm really surprised that that you you're into the law stuff and you're into the art, the creative side of things. You know, I grew up doing crafts my whole life. So my both my grandmothers were knitters and crocheters. So I mean, I grew up crocheting and knitting from a small child. And I started doing those friendship bracelets from the time I was eight, right? So I've been doing that my whole life. And yet, by the time I was 13, I also wanted to be in law. So I have a logical brain side, and I have an art, art and craft side of me. It's kind of you know. Kind of weird sometimes because I'm glad that Steam brings it together <laughs> uh-huh. because I like both and I don't like one or the other. I mean, I, it was funny, you know, when I wired my my room for Ethernet, I was like very empowered. Like I can do, I can still do my computer stuff. Or when I helped my younger son um, build his computer and put the graphics card in and stuff like that. So I mean, I do tech stuff. I do the arts and crafts stuff. Um, I think it's probably because my grandmother had a lot of influence with the crafty stuff, but my dad is, you know, science teacher. So I, the logical thinking part was always there, you know, and the logical deduction. And my dad's also a maker. I mean, he can make anything happen. He, he can look at something and figure out a way to make something happen. So he is like... Just just thinking. like you, you made the mass happen. <laughs> but I get it from him. I mean, you know, he always taught to look outside the box and then look at what you need, right? Well, we know we need it to be fitting on the face. We know that people want to tie, not just hang. We know we don't want four strings tying because that's really inconvenient. Right, you yeah. know, and then we know we want an easy to access pocket, and then I just knew that I wanted it fit in more on the side, you know, because I didn't like how much it was bulging on the side. So that was pretty much the only thing that I added differently. Then combining a couple of other designs together, and then I added that. So. Yeah, that's amazing. So, yeah. Thanks that's for sharing. Of, I mean, right now though, it's it's almost the end of the month, and you know they have this tally first to kind of tally up how much we've donated so i'm trying to get some more funds some people to buy some more stuff before the uh close of the month so that i can add to my sales well and not to my sales but to the you know obviously the proceeds i mean and it's not always just like today i just i offered to just for a friend who um, someone just passed away and i'm making keepsakes of people for the funeral right you know saying and uh, in my uh, uh forever in my heart and we're making that right. keep for everybody you know so doing things like that as well. I mean, so it's always good to give back and to help people emotionally because one of the things like the My Intent Company has been sh- talking about this whole time is they've, and they've really supported this. They've always said that they're a service community, they're a service company, not a jewelry company, right? That mm-hmm. people like me are jewelers who make it into jewelry, but that's not their job, right? That's not what they do. They did the concept of teaching people positive intention and words and finding that inner peace and finding that inner journey. And they've done a ton of inner journey, inner warrior workshops, this conference. So, I mean, so COVID time period. They've had conferences every day. They've had yoga every uh, every other day. They've had breath work. They've had dancing. They've had people yeah. come in and do conversations. You know, they've had all these kind of things to help us develop our inner strength. And mm-hmm. so um, that's, I think, you know, one of the biggest things to, you know, to take during this time is that not only to think of your neighbor and think of what you can do for them, but to also remember to look inward and see what you need to do in yourself to make yourself healthier and to keep yourself healthier and what is it that you need for that inner peace and that inner strength, you know? So, I mean, for me, it's being able to be of help to somebody, you know, be a service is probably one of my biggest things that I need to have my inner peace. <laughs> so I keep on trying to find ways to do that. Um, but I was very thankful for everything that, that, that they had done in the classes they had offered because it was, very emotional sometimes, but it was also very touching. I mean, you even had like a yoga journaling session. It's like you yoga a little bit and you have some thought moment and journal about it and back to the yoga again. But it was pretty interesting. That was an interesting experience. And so, you know, reminding me just again, you give as much as you get, right? I mean, if you give back to people, you're going to get something back. It may not be right away. You may be paying it forward for a while, who knows? But in my opinion, you give out something, something good is going to come back for you. you know, 100%. Right? Yeah. So. And then you just recently posted something on your Instagram. Which is uh, this one, which I, I was asking you about. This is really cool. Yes. I actually have it back here. Yeah. I have, I have, they gave me one. Oh my God. I sound like a little late when I get up to my kids make fun of me. I get made fun of in my household from all the sounds that I make every time I move. <laughs> yeah, stop moving. <laughs> I can't. That's the problem. So it came in a nice little folder. Yeah. And then the nice little gold 
work on side of it and the side of yeah, it. Yeah, that's amazing. And you got the digital copy too, so you upload it. Yes, so they did this for, and they did this for this autonomy awareness month for me too, but then we actually had a hearing, you know, a meeting. So I was able to go in person. And then one of the council members gave it to me and got the picture of a council member as well as the mayor. And I got to say a couple of words about why dysautonomia recognition was important. Wait, do you post it? Do you post that picture? You should post it up. So the picture in the fall of dysautonomia one is posted, yeah. This one wasn't because- And you've been, look, you've been doing vlogging. <laughs> I did one. I did one. I was trying it out. I don't remember what it was. Oh, you know what it was? Um, they're always having good things, right? So I wanted to tell people what it was like, you know, a day in the life of an EDSer. And like that I, day, I kept you, passing you out. You told me that since January. And then I was really surprised that you actually do it. So I did, I did There's one a design. Like, yeah. I did one video because I had kept on passing out that day. And it was a couple of like last week. And in fact, my husband came downstairs and he found me passed out over the side of the couch as I was trying to bend over to get some more beads out of the bag to work on the bracelet. And I go, you know, you know what you when you have dysautonomia, when you can be in a Zoom meeting that you're hosting and you pass out and your friends continue having the meeting. And then, you know, uh, your husband finds you passed out over the side of the couch <laughs> and nobody thinks anything of it. You know, I mean, that's life of the, that's the day in the life of the ADSer. Because, <laughs> you know, they've asked us to tell, you know, what, you know real life stories. Well, finding you passed oh, out. Oh, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even see that you posted this. This is amazing. Oh. You didn't tag me. That's why I never got alert. Oh, I didn't? No. I thought I did. Well, I was just in the very beginning stages of learning how to do stuff like that, so. Yeah, but you should, if you if you can, go in and tag me so I could share it too. So I'm just trying to learn how to do these things. No, you're doing very well. Like, I'm browsing it through. I mean, I, I looked, I skimmed through it, but I haven't, like, really looked into it. Now that I'm looking into it, this is amazing. Since last time, last time we spoke, you're actually doing it. Like, I'm very happy to see you progress. Well, I'm trying to. I mean, reality is, especially now, my business is only going to grow if I can get a presence online. You know, yeah. and reality is, I want to do virtual meetups and virtual parties with people. So this is so group. this is this is what I'm talking about. That's why I want to talk with you because I want to see how I could come in and help. You know what I'm saying? So I hey. feel like besides doing the Zoom stuff, you should do the event, right? You know, parties or right. events so that promotes. And that's yeah. what I'd love to do. I mean, now that I now that, that I'm comfortable using Zoom, I'd love to do a virtual party where we get together. But not, but not, but not even using Zoom. Like for myself, I'm trying to learn how to like put everything together. Like right now with Zoom, I'm putting on YouTube, right? But I'm trying to, right. for me personally, I want to connect this maybe to as live to get a bigger audience. So well, you can, we you could can actually. Stream, I found you out. can stream live to YouTube or Facebook today. Yeah, yeah. So like. Exactly. So I found that out. Maybe we could do Twitch as well. Twitch is huge yes. on streaming right now. So you could actually connect with your Zoom to Twitch and then you can get, get audience from there, which right. connects to Zoom and Zoom could connect to YouTube and like you said, to YouTube live and everything with the stream. Because right. when I did that webinar, I was going to YouTube and I was going to Facebook. Right. Um, and so, uh, and there's a couple of other platforms that let you do multiple versions. I forgot the name, Steam something. Let me look up at it. Because um, that one's a Yeah, look it up, let me know. Because I'm looking more into the stuff because that's the way it, it migrated. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody wants right. live, you need people to join. And so, say for what you're doing, you should do it live. You know? Right. And that's the thing is they're trying to and find then, the audience though, who, would, who, would click, who would click in. <laughs> So like I said, people people are bored right now. So not bored, but people are like all looking for events. So event, right. I found that for Eventbrite like recently because I'm doing a campaign for John. Like I'm doing a campaign thing. I have to share with you as well. So recently, my work is just helping the you know campaign uh, for John. Um, you know how to promote him to get votes and how to get funding for him. You know to get okay. donations. So we've been doing like Eventbrite stuff and that really helped with Google and I've been handling his YouTube and that's been going really well. Okay. So that's how he's getting like donations for his campaign. Okay. So I think like with that, I think with SEO, like you, your website is up, everything's up, you have your YouTube channel, you have everything down already. It's just like more promotion. So like yeah. I said, with Eventbrite, that helps with Google, like people could search for you, like what, what's this like craft night or whatever. And we could raise money, you know, what, whatever you're right. raising for. And again, we could connect with Twitch, which again, recently what I, you know, that, that has a huge audience. You don't even realize how, how big, of, I don't even realize because I, I was avoiding it for 
all these years. I've been avoiding it because my kids are on Twitch, so I've been avoiding it. Exactly, exactly. So I've been avoiding it. But it's not just for it's not just for gaming. It's for anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's for it's for like even like my DJ friends. They're like playing every night. You know, playing songs every night on Twitch, and they're streaming like playing, like you said, Twitch, uh, Instagram Live. They're streaming to um, right. Facebook, YouTube. And it just capture all the platforms that just putting yourself out there. Like when you're ready, of course, you know, that you don't want to embarrass yourself. But, you know, I think I never did live before, but I'm just saying like, this is a good platform. Like I'm going to start doing it, especially at this time, because that's the only way to expand your life. Well, I think live and even conversations like this aren't bad live if you let people and people can come in and ask questions because yeah. you know, I think and we can ask that's them. actually a good thing. I mean, I'm very, first, I mean, unlike, n- not all still people are as open as I am, but I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm an open book about my disabilities and its impact on me because yeah. it, I don't, I feel like if I say it's a closed book, then it doesn't help educate anybody, right? I mean, you know, I'm very open about the impact on my family, about the impact on my body, about the impact on my internal organs, you know, it's not <laughs> It's not great. Some of the things that my internal organs don't like me anymore. Um, and I have no problem answering questions about that because the fact is, is that I don't think things will change in how people are treated mm-hmm. unless people understand more, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, one of the things like I get all the time, oh yeah, I forget things too, I forget things too. And it's like, well, you may, but it's not exactly the same thing of you know forgetfulness that you get when you get older versus forgetfulness when your brain isn't processing anymore. You know, it's yeah. completely different experience like fatigue is very different than chronic fatigue you know you know when you have chronic illness fatigue right you know yeah. it's very different than somebody who just hasn't gotten to sleep and exactly. it's hard for somebody to comprehend that but you know i'm straightforward about it and i don't really have a problem talking about those things yeah so i think we should plan something and then we should put the event together Definitely. and that's how that's how you grow that sounds great like a do it weekly you know do a weekly thing that would be cool. Yeah. Honestly, that would be really cool because, you know, I think um, right now, one of the silver linings of COVID has been, I think, a little bit people being a little bit more empathetic. You know, like all mm-hmm. the people who used to say to other people that are disabled, oh, you're so lucky you get to stay home. I think yeah. are now beginning to understand that's not exactly luck, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think also uh, one of the things, too, is I think it's important that people always keep on thinking the that COVID affecting the elderly right and they have this image of who the medically fragile is right and they don't necessarily count considering that i'm a 45 year old woman with two young kids i'm medically fragile so mm-hmm. as my not as my 14 year old said i can't die because i have two boys to take care of mm-hmm. <laughs> when the governor of texas had said you know we'll all be willing to sacrifice ourselves for the economy my son turned around and goes no not you you can't die because you have to take care of us i mean mm-hmm. so the idea of having a real face to the fact that you know there are medical there are people in the medical community that are not doing well that are really impacted by a lot of challenges i mean it took me two and a half months to get my new medication prescribed that, that was prescribed two, two and a half months ago covered by the doctors by the insurance i have really good insurance and it still took me two and a half months and i swear to god i felt like i was banging my head against the wall like two days ago um and took everything inside of me not to pull out the new york attitude when i was having a problem with the pharmacist I really wanted to go, this isn't a brain surgery here, you're not a rocket scientist, this is really simple. But it was a challenge to get it and you know, to be your own advocate at some of your worst times in life is Mm -hmm. incredibly difficult, you know, and that's one of the things that I keep on watching people in my community go through. And I say that as a person I've watched numerous people get more um, concerned about suicide, I've been concerned about them being suicidal, about self-harm, I mean, you know, that's already was increasing with the lack of pain medications as a whole ridiculous who have a over control of getting pain medication to people who really needed it mm-hmm. then watching um people not have access to the treatment that they need you know has only increased the challenges that these people are having plus and they're already in a bad situation they can't advocate for themselves they don't have anybody else to go with them to advocate for them it makes that hospital stay 10 times harder mm-hmm. at least when i was in dc and i was in the hospital and i wasn't getting seen by a doctor i had two friends there with me and i had them be able to go get the doctor to go you know say what's going on here you know I mean, and even then, I still had to call customer service because I was there 24 hours before I got a brush and a toothbrush. Um, and so, you know, it's definitely a challenge and having a real face to understand that, you know, I look like not much different than everybody else, but the challenges that I face is quite different than the majority of people. Not, well, it's not different than anybody else with chronic disorders, but different than, you know, the able-bodied population. Right. 
So, and that's, you know, I think is a good thing to really be able to express to people. You know, mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, I look, you know, sitting here, right? I'm sitting in my chair, just have, I, yeah, okay, I have an oxygen tube on, but other than that, I look and talk like, I, you know, that I don't normal. have to. Yeah. Right. I, I, I've been trying to get away from the word normal because I've always used that word, but now that I'm an educator for disability awareness, I'm trying to not say that. <laughs> what is what is the word then? What will you use? Um, able-bodied. You know, I mean, I, I always refer to everybody else as normal, but nobody, what, what is really normal? I mean, you know, yeah, that's true. always that question of what is normal, but it was kind of a joke too, but I mean, half the time I say, you know, walking down the block and I'm not walking, I'm wheeling. I'm just, just, just terminology. But some people, you know, take offense to that. Um, and trying to be more, you know, aware of what different populations of different organizations take offense to or offended by or communicate with, right? I mean, like the deaf community is not disabled. They, they speak a different language, right? So understanding that different, the nuances of the different communities is pretty important. Uh -huh. uh, just so, uh, so learning that has been a, an experience in itself too. I actually joined a uh, ASL uh, Facebook group because I wanted to practice my ASL again. And, learn more again about the there's a very lot of nuances in the deaf community, right? And to learn a little bit more about that again and keep being more immersed. I used to be more immersed with it when I was in college because mm -hmm. I went to the pre lab for disability people with disabilities. We also had a lot of kids coming in that were uh, that were deaf. You know, to help them write papers, teach, change papers from ASL into English. So I kinda got a little bit more understanding about language and about culture and stuff. So it gave me a broader understanding. But just, you know, the concept in itself of how many challenges we face. I mean, I have a friend who had to have her leg removed because of her, her severe chronic pain and the damage it was doing for her leg. She just had an, she just had to have an amputation. She just had an amputation because of the uh -huh. severe damage to her leg going on, you know, and so, but her life is better now. And I get it, you know, because her pain level has gone down dramatically and she can do more now because of that, you know, and so it's interesting to see these different things change as a, as in inside of our world because of all the different challenges that we face, you know, and unfortunately, Depression is, is a real thing. I mean, it's a real thing everywhere, but it's a severe problem for a lot of people with, with chronic pain, because especially if you don't get your pain treated, right? And you don't know how to treat it, or you don't know how to direct your energy, then you have all the time in the world to focus on what you can't do. Mm -hmm. That is just, that can be very overwhelming for people. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I immerse myself in my craft. When I can't get out of bed, I still immerse myself in my craft as much as possible, because otherwise you have all the time in the world to think of all the can'ts instead of the can'ts. So I try very hard. It's not, it means I don't have my down moments, but I try very hard to think of all the can so that I'm not so focused on the cannot or the severe pain moments or, you know, yeah. you know that kind of a thing. So it's, it's a mixture, but it's definitely, unfortunately, I know I've seen a lot of challenges a lot of people are having this year and I, even more so with COVID going on, right? So with more isolation, especially if you're disabled and you live by yourself, right? You have even more isolation than Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's definitely um, it's definitely been challenging for a lot of people. Do you have any more? Do you have any plans for the summer? I'm not allowed to go anywhere right now. <laughs> <laughs> so normally I would be going to We Both Camp next weekend and Boy Scout Camp in, the two, in a couple of weeks. Uh, we are doing a virtual leadership summit for the youth, uh, which is mostly scout led anyway. But I'm a, I'll be there as a, a as an advisor of the uh, ASM. Um, I will probably do a couple more merit badges this summer. I'm doing a couple of public, I'm assisting in a couple of public health ones. I'll probably do another photography one. My photography, I, I limited to 20 kids and it was filled up in, 20, in, in, in under two hours on a Saturday afternoon after it was posted. So uh, what was cool though is that I had 20 kids on, on Zoom doing it and we had the two hour session and I had kids from all over the county and none of them were actually from my, my, my local why, group. Why, why, why don't you do dirty? You can have a hundred. Well, you know, the thing was, is that I also have to review the work too, right? So they have oh, to do work take too after. long. They have to do work after. And I want to get, I want to get real feedback, right? Because they have to, they have to take pictures. Like in the beginning, they take pictures from different angles. They take different lighting and they have to look And you record, them. you record all of that, right? You really need to use that. You could actually use the material too for your YouTube channel. Well, we can't record the video. I mean, I have, oh, a, I have a, um, I see my time to have time to get my words out, but I have a slide slideshow thing that I have for them to use. Oh. But I also do things like with cahoots because it's games and kids like games. Yeah. And the way they can participate and actually answer questions instead of me just you know lecturing to them. Yeah. But I have like a Google slide presentation that I give to them. But then we talk in everything because they have to they have to post learn about aperture and light and 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 how does that impact a picture and you know uh, ISO and all that kind of wonderful stuff. And then. Um, 
they have to, at the end of their final project, is to put eight pictures or eight to ten pictures together and tell a story. Mm -hmm. You know, and so then I get feedback back to see them on their on their story. Right? I mean, obviously, whatever they have, they have. I mean, I had really creative stories. I had one person line up and do a story with her um, her American doll. And it was an adoption, pet adoption. She had a little d d pet store and there was like little pet dolls. And there was even a credit card sliding through them. And she, you know, did step by step. And she got down at the height to get the picture, you know, because we talk about positioning of the camera, positioning of your body, positioning all that kind of thing for the image that you're going to get. Um, one person did it, you know, step by step process of the cooking of a meal. You know, so they had, and then one person, like, talked about how, you know, we should be taking pictures of what life is like right now with COVID. So I had another person, their project was actually taking pictures of local parks that were empty, you know, and, and, and the streets that were empty without any kids, without any people to, you know, represent what's happening in our, in our society right now, you know. So the other, re other reason too for limiting the number is that I want to be able to flip through and make sure I can see everybody's faces and see that they're participating. You know, the more kids you get, the easier it is to get lost and not focus in and, you know, know my own children, I know how easy it is to not focus in, so. I, we do that. We make sure we kind of control the number. So how? Um, yeah, that's amazing. When is your next event? When so next we have on event? July 12th. We're going to have a virtual crafting day, uh, and then I'm going to. I happen to also be doing a public health um, merit badge on the third, third. I'm assisting with it. Part of the six of us leaders that are going to be taking part in, in working with the scouts. So I'll make some type of trivia game for them to make it a little bit more fun. Uh, I know I have a virtual party coming up on the 28th of June for one of the, the women that I met through one of the workshops and uh, possibly one before that too. So I'm trying to create virtual. So you, uh, you have like the event page, the event, the link, let me know. So I put again, link it below so people could participate as well. Yeah, so on my website, I did create a calendar and events page on my website so that people can book events. So uh, I haven't had people book anything yet, but I've had well, live one sensitive of the 28th. But so having the events place for them to either book it, whether they want to have a private consultation to design a bracelet or jewelry piece, piece of jewelry, or if they want to have a virtual craft event, or if they want to have a my intent, positive intention type workshop where we work together and do some games and activities and try to come up with the words that are the most inspirational and then I'll create the piece of a, a bracelet or teaching for the first people. Right. And that can be done with a team, that can be done with a family, that can be done with a group, that can be done with ladies night, guys night, you know, what have you. Yeah. But to take, but if you have extra time, don't forget to write your book. Remember we talked about it. <laughs> I know somebody else has told me the same thing. It's it's there. <laughs> but you have a lot of good stuff. <laughs> it's there to I talk mean, it's, to it's, talk and write about. It's you know it's easier for you to talk and it is for me to write. Yeah. And oh really? It so is. we should do we should do a video documentary of you then. <laughs> it really you know between my cognitive challenges. My physical challenges, it's easier for me to talk than it is to write. Because now, um, since COVID, something's happened to my neck and um, my numbness in my hands has gotten worse. So I actually can't feel these thick fingers at all anymore. Mm. So typing is very difficult. And voice recognition. I told you, use, yeah, use voice recognition. I told you that last Well, well use, voice recognition is eh, and it used to be better, but now I slur more because of my senior gravis. So I'm kind of getting it at both ends, not really being successful either way. Um, and it's very frustrating. So I'm having a harder time now because I used to be able to use voice recognition and first voice recognition was garbage, right? And you know, that was like when I started in 93. Then it got better, but then my speech started slurring and now it's gotten worse, you know? And so I could definitely, like I said, I noticed, you know, when they, when the listen uh, for the AI system for the recognition for the uh, closed captions, yeah. the difference between me and everybody else during that call was dramatic. <laughs> Peter, leave it, baby. <laughs> he's got his loud tip bark. Yeah. He's the sweetest thing on the planet, but he's got a loud bark. I know. Well, you know, he's such a sweetheart. He just don't look everybody to death. <laughs> it's like my nurse walks in the house, he's barking and wagging his tail at the same time. So cute. I've, I've been fortunate. I've had the same nurse um, all but like once or twice for, this, for almost two years now. So he's gotten into our family pretty well. Where is he right now? He only comes on twice. He only comes twice a month. Uh, every two weeks, he comes for two days for my infusion. So I have my infusion this morning. Oh. I'll be back here tomorrow. Oh. So every two weeks, I get two days of infusion. 
then I do in between that I do my own IV fluid twice a week too, so it depends as well. Mm. All right, I think it's getting late here in New York, so I'm gonna wrap up. So thank you for coming on back to my channel. It was great having you. Um, I'm gonna relink everything below. Um, so again, guys, if you haven't followed Deborah, you know, everything's gonna be linked below. Follow her journey, follow her events, support. Again, everything that you're making, you're donating. So, you know, support. I might and get a couple also, things. Also, people want me to host a party. I can host the party and we can donate it for, for part of the proceeds to whatever organization they want to donate to. Yeah, we'll plan something. Let's talk about that. We'll plan something and we'll host something. Yeah. yeah Even before the donate. June 20. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll plan something because we're all in need right now. We're all at home right now. So before we anything opens, we could do something like that. Let's we'll see for June. So. Yeah, that sounds good, especially because then he'll be done with school. Yeah. <laughs> My little guy finishes school next week. Awesome. So then, then we'll have all the time to plan the party. <laughs> yep. Definitely. Sounds Thank great. you. Thank you for hosting the Zoom today. <laughs> no problem. So, so send me the file whenever. So send me the file whenever you can. Yeah, so it'll, after we're done, it'll actually process it, and then once it's processed, I can send it over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, guys. So I'll all see right. you guys next time. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. It, honestly, I do because you know I, it's been my goal to really get the word out. You know because so many people just don't understand it, right? Yeah. I mean, it is so easy to say it's in their head or it's not real or they're faking it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's different when you start hearing somebody who, me, who's very verbal, right? Mm -hmm. Very verbal, but also saying, you know what? There are there are down moments, there are down days, and things are not functioning. You know, and that's just part of life. I mean. My kid, the day I was crying in pain, my kid was trying to cheer me up, you know, and mm -hmm. trying not to cry in front of my child, it's mm -hmm. kind of hard. But I mean, I was like whimpering because I hurt my back in something and I like, couldn't get it back in place, mm -hmm. you know, and so it's it's definitely a challenge, but it's also something that I want people to be aware of because, you know, I look normal, but I'm I'm anything anything but normal, right? I mean, you know, if I could get a new body, I'd take a new body in a second, just to the brain, I like the brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as the cognitive functions are better, I'm good with that. But I like my personality, so, you know, but reality yeah, is, is that it's it's hard. Life is not easy. It's not. I've not been dealt an easy hand, but I have been dealt a wonderful family. You know, so mm -hmm. I'm blessed with that. I'm blessed with the ability to have a husband who has a has a good enough job that I can buy a ton of craft supplies to do stuff. So, yeah, look at look know. at look at everything in the back. <laughs> now I'm just hoping people buy so that I can you know do more. You know, because it's like there's more stamps and the more things that I want to get, but I'm like I need to sell some stuff first. You know. I also got a whole bunch of new stamps for yes, Peter. Thank you very much, honey bunny. Um, I just got a whole bunch of new stamps to do like inspirational cards, things like you matter and everything with 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 quotations about really great quotes about hope and about caring and about thinking about you um, and about life matters and you matter and your strength, and your, your internal strength. Because you know, right now is the time that people are having a hard time, right? So I thought it'd be really great to make cards that people can give to people who they think need it. So mm -hmm. trying to get that out there too. Especially for the essential workers. What? Like, especially for the essential workers. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it's, you know, I think I mean, one of the things is, is that you matter more than anything. And so that was just such a great, you know, thing. Or mm -hmm. I had a friend who I know was very close to, um, she was talked down from suicide recently. And mm -hmm. so one of the stamps says, you know, um, your life matters, you know. And it was, and it didn't, it wasn't like attended at the time, but then when I got that stamp, it was like just hit that that's like a perfect thing to give to her and her card comes in her little gift, a little gift baggie and stuff um, to let her know that she matters. You know, she's one of the people that I stayed with when I was in DC, uh, when we met through our, our, our different research groups, but um, uh, advocacy groups, you know, but so it's, I want to bring awareness to the fact that, you know, pain is real, chronic pain is real just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist you know and just because we're functioning one minute doesn't mean we're functioning the next minute right <laughs> because i could be functioning one minute and i could be down either completely passed out or just out done that's it my body is completely shut down and you know people have a hard time understanding that i mean the people who know me well know especially because my dog will start reacting they know who, who peter's barking yeah. i'm done um he'll tell on me he's really good at telling on me um really really good he's telling me all the time um but uh so but I think it's really important and I love the fact you're willing to do this because I don't think there's enough real talk about it 
Mm-hmm. And then you also have the other issues that we as women face is that we don't see ourselves depicted in ads, right? You'll occasionally see a disabled woman in an ad, but it's it's a beautiful, gorgeous woman who is gorgeous beforehand and you know just happens to have a wheelchair. You know, it's not necessarily somebody who's battling lupus or battling, you know, chronic fatigue disorders or battling, you know, these other things that, you know, are so significant that completely deteriorate the body from the inside out. I mean, I don't have a bladder functioning right, right, normally. Right. I don't have nothing functioning normally anymore. Nothing. I don't have anything functioning functioning properly anymore. You know, and so it's hard to have that self-esteem when you don't see that depicted as beautiful in society. Fortunately, my husband still manages to find me beautiful, so that helps me. <laughs> That's a good thing. But Thanks I know I'm shit. fortunate. Yeah. I don't. Ha- not everybody has that. You know. Yeah. That's so. True. And my dog is picking up every single thing on the floor because he wants to treat. <laughs> She's like, if I give you this, will you give me a treat? Honey, I don't have any kids for you, baby boy. <laughs> 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 he's, he's cleaning up my floor for me. Better than your brothers do. Oh, I might say hello. <laughs> Alright, let me see you down here. Hey, Bimbo. Come here, baby. Can you see him? Yeah, and my a little bit. Right, stamping it right here. Hey. He's like, he's like, I hear, I hear something. Oh, you haven't even eat yet. Go eat. Me too. Come here, Peter. Come Go here. Eat. Come here. Come here. Oh. Like, what are you doing? Oh. Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. You didn't like, eat yet. What are you doing, Mama? I said you didn't eat yet. Go eat. All I'll right. Over you soon. Let's plan something. All right. Let's stay in touch. I'm. I'm so glad that you're back on. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Just give me. Yeah. Uh, I have more time now, but I'm gonna edit it as soon as possible. So I'll send you the link again when everything is ready. And then if you have anything else to add, right, just send it to me, and then. I'll and next month is my senior gravis awareness month. Mm-hmm. Next next month is my senior gravis awareness month. Yeah. So. So, <laughs> we'll have yeah. this before that. Right. Well, yeah. You know, I'm trying to like get. I was hoping to get some more sales in today and tomorrow, mm-hmm. just because they have like a thing. You know, if you make a certain level of sales, or you know, certain number of donation, you get you know X whatever the little little markets were. I don't even remember where they are. But um, I was just trying to get up a little. I was trying to get enough purchases that I can donate over a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So I haven't. I'm not quite there yet. I'm like at sixty. So I'm like, I need a couple more people to buy today. For tomorrow. So I put, it on your, put it on your story. What? Put it on your story. Yeah, I was thinking of doing that. I was gonna, I was gonna take a video of me uh, with my uh, zebra shirt on and showing some of my zebra stuff. Tell yeah, them to buy. That helps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see you soon then. All right, thank, thank you. you so Appreciate it. Bye bye. Have a good night. You too. Have a good night. Thanks for connecting. We'll, we'll stay in touch. I'll text you tomorrow. Okay.